Let's do this. As the clouds parted and revealed the snow capped monolithic pyramids reaching up for the heavens, I looked to my dad and I said, There's some big ass hills. <laughs> Life is like skiing down a mountain, or at least this is the lesson I'm going to try to allude to today. You start off at the top and you make little cutbacks here and there that change whether you end up over here, you make little cutbacks that end up over here. I'm going to explain this through a story that I experienced while skiing in Switzerland. It wasn't until the third day of our skiing endeavor until we realized, man, these Swiss people can really ski. Mm. And I pride myself on my ability to ski. I've been skiing since I was like two years old. And so when I saw this team of professional Swiss skiers with carbon fiber skis, carbon fiber poles, and ski helmets and goggles that weigh less than like a gram, and they were just built for mm. speed, I thought, those guys are pretty cool and those guys are pretty fast. So I was trying to hang with them, and I followed them for about half an hour until they finally stopped at the toe halfway down the hill, and they looked at the red big sign, and then they continued on their way. And I saw this encounter, and we said, that's our chance to pimp these guys on being the coolest guys in the mountain. So we rode over to this chairlift, read this sign. The sign was in French, German, and Italian, three languages I cannot speak nor read. <laughs> so we had no clue what was happening. We said, screw it. Went over to the front of the line. There wasn't a line at this trail. And we were like, that's kind of odd. There was just one old Swiss man. Looks at me. I look at him. I give him a thumbs up. He gives me a thumbs up. Go over to the chair. Helps us get on the chair. And the time it took for that frigid metal to kiss my cheek is all the time that it took for us to realize the magnitude of our mistake. The chair took us clean over the face of a hill. And there was a 3,000 foot drop straight below. The peak of this uh, mountain is 11,233 feet. It's the tallest mountain in the Bernina Range in the Swiss Alps. So I was scared, because these chairlifts were built in the late 90s by some Swiss guy using recycled metal, and there was wind just whipping us everywhere. <laughs> so at this point, my dad reached up in vain to put the safety bar down, because there wasn't a safety bar, because safety was for suckers. <laughs> and so he took this chairlift all the way out to the top and saw one of the most graceful sights I've ever seen, which is the unloading zone at the top. I stood up at the top of the, the hill, and I was very excited to get off this chair. As I get off the chair, a five-pound block of ice met me in my head, and I went down like a sack of potatoes. <laughs> the last thing I remember before going fully into the tunnel was a French guy singing, <laughs> And then I went out. I come to a couple minutes later, and I was in the hut, and they were performing a concussion test on me. I passed the concussion test, and they handed me off to the ski patrol, and that said, you'll follow us down the hill, make sure that we get down okay, and I don't have to pass out and you die. And so, we're following this guy, and he's like a local guy, because he's like working up the hill. And he brings us to the roped off section of the hill. The beautiful thing about the Swiss Alps is that certain hills are above where trees can grow, because there's not enough oxygen for them to survive. So there's not a single tree at the top of the mountain. So he brings us to this roped off section, picks up the rope, and he says, you can go first to me. So I look over the hill. I saw the most beautiful, pristine pack of snow I've ever seen in my life. There wasn't a single little rabbit that had crossed here before. Not a paw print in the sand in the snow. Not a single track from some guy who went there earlier. It was just beautiful. It's the most perfect thing I've ever seen. And I was going to be the first person on this part of the earth recently. And that was my opportunity that I got for taking this new path. This little cutback provided an opportunity because I decided to go where others wouldn't. And that's the whole point of this. Make sure you look for those opportunities. Not often are your signs in life going to be so clear that you understand them. Mine were Italian, French, and German. I don't know. What the heck is that? <laughs> so you're going to have sometimes easy opportunities to see something, where it's a literal sign, but other times you don't know if it's a sign. You might decide to play soccer and then come play a pepper down and just see what's happening with your life now. Okay, <laughs> one little cutback, now you're on the backside of the mountain. These little opportunities provide you change. But I'm not bashing the people that want to stick on the path and have your sick carbon fiber skis, pimping out carbon fiber poles, all of this is going for you, and you can see the best of the best. But do not turn a blind eye to the cool little tail of death. <laughs> Sometimes those are going to be the most fun experiences of your life, leading with cool moments that you can talk about in class. So, don't turn a blind eye to cool opportunities. And always, always, always. Look for chances to experience new things. A man by the name of Robert Frost once said, Two roads diverged, and I took the path less traveled, and I turned out okay. Thank you.